Good day, everyone. So recently, I built this um, kinetic sand table that draws different patterns in sand, and each of the lines requires code. So uh, I wanted just to use a single Arduino to put all these designs in. And if you remember, an Arduino only has 32 kilobytes of data. And you'll see many different um, uh, sand tables online, but they're kind of cheating. They're using um, Raspberry Pi or some other kind of microcontroller. But uh, I looked online and they're like 60 bucks, but an Arduino, you know, is like $20. So I put my requirements to just use a single um, Arduino, you know. And so I'll show you exactly how I did that. Um, the different designs are normally done in sanify.org and it allows you to draw different things uh, and patterns and then you can export the g-code and what the g-code this is what a g-code looks like it's basically gives a command with the x and y coordinates of each point in your design and so you have an x-axis and a y-axis and then you have two points and then the Gerbil file it tells you how to go from one point to another but you'll see that there's lots of uh, redundant data in G code number one it has always a G command and then um, it has X Y so I programs uh, a code that you can just put in the G codes name and it will extract all the garbage data and then just uh, have the good data because we just need to have the X and Y coordinates so the output of the file will just have the only the X and Y with commas therefore I can just copy that and I can go into uh, my sand table code and just paste the uh, in an into an array the XY location and because we don't need to say G1 each time because normally what happens is you send the G code to your Gerbil file uh, decoder and then it makes the uh, motor spin in, uh, on your stepper motors uh, but uh, again I don't I didn't want to have um, a laptop or a Raspberry Pi I just wanted to have a cheaper project just every all the code on that so I'm going to show you exactly how I figured this out because it, it does take some compression of data um, so I had to develop my very own Gerbil um, decoder and to do that all you need it to do is be able to go and move the ball bearing up right down and left and if you can get it to do that that's the basic code of any Gerbil um, decoder uh, because you send a command and on a sand table you just have to be able to go left and right up and down so here we go you you see I have it uh, moving there in the up down left right configuration but what happens if I have to go on an angle well we have to do some coding to figure all this out but the general idea is you have two points and if I want to go on an angle it's exactly the same as going uh, uh, right and then up because it, if you recall with a slope it's just the change in the y over the change in the x so I go over so many units in the x direction and then so many units in the y direction and that's the same as going uh, from the two points um, for example let's say I, I had a slope of positive 2 well um, I uh, to go along that path all I have to do is go to the uh, even it doesn't matter how long this is because the slope will remain uh, the same uh, to all the time and so to all I have to do is go to the right one unit and then I have to go up two units because that's the slope and I can break that line into many different um, uh, smaller units and if I make those units small enough it's the same as going on that uh, angled, angled line and so the resolution that I used was one millimeter. And so anytime I do an angle, I just go over one unit in the X direction and then how many of our units are in the Y direction. And uh, because we don't need to have the, too much uh, the accuracy, uh, one millimeter, you cannot tell with the human eye. Uh, and so that will work. Also, I'm not using any uh, libraries. All the code is included. Uh, also in the description and you just have to have those points and then after you have the Gerbil uh, file it uh, should be able to uh, work there so here's the the different functions for up right up down left and right and then the other one is a plot where you have your two two uh, points 
And the only calculation you have to do is the slope to determine how many units you have to go up and down uh, per one unit in the x direction. And so this is the code I put the distance as one for the x direction. The slope will find the difference in the xy direction and determine if it's positive or negative because sometimes you have a positive slope or a negative slope. And then you'd have to either go up or down uh, in the y direction based on the slope. And so that's the, the basic code. You could uh, you're either going to the left direction depending on the origin um, that you're, you need to go. But uh, it's the, the idea is basically the same. You either go left or right one unit and then uh, based on the difference in the y direction, whether it's positive or negative, you're gonna be going up and down um, it also has a security code there that um, if it's outside the range of the grid of the table, it will go in an infinite loop uh, so that you don't uh, damage your stepper motors and things like that. So the amount of code, it's not too much. The majority of the code is storing that data because normally you use the SD card and uh, using a Raspberry Pi, but I put everything here. You also have a plot function that it reads through the um, arrays and uh, then it just increments uh, through each of the points. So let's have a typical look at uh, some code uh, design in Senify. This complicated uh, pattern has that many points there and um, it uses a lot because the heart actually has curvatures. Anytime you have a circle, it takes a lot of points. But if we can actually reduce the amount of points or data by using more linear shapes, for example, this uh, square uses five points because you also have the point of origin, but uh, it's basically four points for a square. We usually have four vertices. Um, now, if we choose a circle, let's compare a square to a circle. So here's a circle right here. How many points do we have there? We have over 100 points for a circle. That's a lot more than this uh, four points for a single shape. And if you wanted to do a circle several times, this is gonna take you up uh, thousands of points of data and we don't have that much space. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we can actually uh, solve this problem is we can approximate uh, a, a circle and to approximate a circle, we can use a polygon. So a polygon has different sides. You can choose the number of sides in Sanify. So instead of having four sides, for example, we can increase the number of sides of the polygon there. And the more, what a circle is, is basically a polygon with infinite amount of sides. But if we go up to like 25 sides, you can't really tell with your eye that it's not a circle, right? And so um, this is approximating a circle. It's not a true, you know, a circle there, but it's more of a polygon, with, let's say 25 sides. And you'll see the number of points there. It's drastically reduced at 25 points uh, versus um, our other circle with over 100 points. But if we put it right over top of each other, you can't really tell the difference. And so we can actually do this to reduce, again, we're trying to save data to get all these uh, patterns onto our Arduino Uno. And uh, there we go. So we went from um, over 100 points down to uh, just 25 points. And that's going to uh, greatly reduce the amount of code um, storage because each, each um, point requires uh, data there. So it'll be, it'll take one integer um, for a X or Y component. Uh, other linear data we want to try to use is for example, a star. Um, it looks uh, like more of a complicated shape and yet it doesn't use too many points. But let's say we wanted to make it a loop um, and the ball bearing to go around in a circle it requires uh, uh, still uh, quite a few more points. Uh, even for example, this uh, is a square and this goes around an infinite pattern. We can actually, instead of using points, if we find a pattern, we can actually find a loop. And so we can actually reduce that complicated code down um, and uh, just have our basic shape 
And then each time it goes through the loop, it's going to shift over, for example, 10 units. And so this is a other way, instead of just doing points, like Sendify uses G code, we can actually store the data as a loop um, using a pattern. So let's say we wanted to make a, a loop of um, a square, and then it's just filling it up our um, send table. And so you can see this takes about 40 points of uh, data, which is would take about approximately 40 lines of code. But if I use a loop or iteration, and I find a pattern, and it's a repeating pattern, this only required about like five lines of code within a loop and uh, it went down from 40 lines of code down to like 10 lines of code so you're um four times compressed um and you can also make different patterns one of my favorite patterns is this uh, bouncing pattern and it looks kind of complicated how many lines of code would you think it would take to do that well, in fact, it would only take 13 lines of code. It's because I use the iteration. I use the loop that if something's greater than the this dimension, it's going to change direction. Also, you may have noticed that I'm using remote control uh, in my latest design. And instead of using libraries, which are often inefficient and they're for any remote control, I put the code spe specifically for um, my remote and I put it as uh, interrupt. And so it only used uh, several lines of code as well it's because many times library has extra data that you don't need. And so I just wrote everything in in one uh, Arduino sketch. Also check your variables, like for example, bool and integer, bool uses less data um, there. So what I've done to make uh, the code as uh, compact as possible is I removed the garbage data, like the G1 and the X and Y, and I only saved the X and Y. I round also use the Python code to round to the nearest millimeter, uh, approximate circles. Um, if you, there's a repeated pattern, use loops. You wanna avoid using libraries because often libraries are not um, very efficient because you didn't write them, you don't know what's going on in that code. Uh, and check your, your variables, make sure that you're using ints or uh, bools or what, what have you that can all help. If you have some other ideas how to reduce the code more, please put it in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. If you like electronics, please subscribe and have a good day.